kind of doing a small series and I've got one, maybe two more to do after this one. Uh, but we looked at the seven churches and found fault with, uh, Jesus found fault with two of, uh, with all but two of them. And so the logical step in my mind was, okay, then how do we live? And so that's the series that I've been kind of going over. Uh, looked at uh, Man's Bent to Sin. I, I didn't title it that way. Uh, and then really what to do about sin. And then last week was sin and um, righteous living. Well, now we're into the righteous living aspect of it. And what I want to look at today is something that we can pretty easily in our society get a wrong impression of what it even means. Um, and that's the idea of meditation. And we'll, you'll understand more of what I mean by that as we uh, progress along. A definition of meditation, this is from Webster's Dictionary. To engage in contemplation or reflection, or to focus one th one's thoughts on, or to reflect on or ponder over. And I thought that was a very appropriate set of definitions. There was one other one that had to do with... Uh, well, the, the implication was premeditated crime. Um, he, he meditated on doing such and such, you know, uh, it, that had nothing to do with whatever, you know, I mean, in, in my opinion anyway, that shouldn't even have been part of the scenario, but they do apparently use that term in that sense. And so uh, I didn't, include that in the definition. You look it up in Webster's Dictionary, it's two different types of verb. and uh, They're both relevant. This is, you know, they both said the same thing. This one is just one of the two types of verbs that were included on it. And then there was another one that, and I'm not going to get into all the English grammatics of it, that I think that'll take too much time. But the, the other one said the exact same thing, only they added one other, one other aspect. Um, but to meditate is to engage in contemplation or reflection. And we'll see some importance to that particular aspect of it. There's also to focus one's thoughts on, and again, we'll see that there are important aspects to that when it comes to the Christian life, or to reflect on or ponder over. And there again, very important to the Christian life. Now, uh, well, I, I'm just going to carry this through. This is a type of meditation. And the Dalai Lama said this, if every eight-year-old in the world is taught meditation, we will eliminate violence from the world within one generation. Okay, now, I'm going to step out on a limb here. I agree with that. But not that kind of meditation. <laughs> on what do you engage in contemplation or reflection? On what do you focus your thoughts? Or what do you ponder or reflect over? That's the question. This is absolutely from Buddhism. Okay, What she's doing right there in that particular picture is and we're going to get into this a little bit farther as, as things progress. Huh. The leg stance, the finger stance, 
and the posture matter greatly in that because what they're trying to do is set free the inner self from the pelvic area to go up the the inner serpent to go up and affect the brain okay that's i mean look into it for yourself we'll get into what the world sees as meditation and you'll see that that's the general idea of it i that that I could talk for hours on that alone, and I'm not going to. <clears throat> um, what the Dalai Lama was trying to get across is if everybody would look to their inner self and release the serpent within themselves to affect their brain or, or to control their mind, then, and it's interesting, they would use serpent because that is going to come up later <laughs> um, but if every one of them would do that then peace would happen okay we're going to see that that is exactly against what God says and, and how long have they been doing that? about 1800 years overall it, it, I'm, I'm just throwing out a ballpark figure it's probably more than that but and are we more oh, you bet. You <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just so you know, we're we're going over we're the the next progress in how shall we live and you know, meditation, and we're going to see the biblical importance of it. This shows it rather clearly in the world's idea and I'm stressing the world's idea because I want to point out the difference between what the world says we should meditate and what God says okay the meditation that is being pictured here you see the little light rays and where it's coming from it's coming from the heart because from within, in the mind of Buddhism, which is rampant in our world today, is where peace and safety and sanctity and holiness and everything else comes from. From within. I didn't, get, I didn't copy down a picture that showed the other progression of the snake being uh, Released the serpent being released from the pelvic area meditation this is what I can't read the guy's name but he's a he, a, a Buddhist uh, meditation is the art of learning how to tend the sacred ground in your life it connects you with what your inner world that's the mindset that the world is pushing as far as meditation yeah, I don't know. Have you ever seen any of these rocks set up like the like pictured in this? All over, up and down the river, up and down the creeks, along people's houses, all over the place we're seeing those stacks. It's from people meditating in that sense. And the biggest way that they've gotten into this l line of thought uh, in, in our society today is when they started teaching yoga in school. And I've heard people say, well, the yoga that they're teaching is not Buddhism. Buddhists will tell you emphatically that without yoga, there's no Buddhism. And without Buddhism, there is no yoga. That is where this meditation and worship, worshiping of self is coming from. It is an absolute fact when you look it up. I mean, by their own words, I'm not talking about people that say things against that particular religion. That's not it at all. Why am I stressing this so much? Because it's highly important that we understand what it means when, for example, David says on his bed he meditates the Word of God. Okay, that, That's just one quick example. Um, and we're going to continue to move. God's response to meditation their line of thought is simple look inward release the serpent 
Let it control your mind. Look for inner peace. Control your inner self. God, Jesus said this, for, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, theft, co covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile a person. So if you're looking in for righteousness, you're going to miss the boat. It has to be that way. The oh, well, we, the, wait till we get to the conclusion because it'll it'll clear things up just a little bit. Um, what is godly me meditation? To focus one's thoughts on and to reflect or ponder over God's word. Okay, on what do I base that? Let's look. Psalm 119. And I know I titled this to look at uh, Philippians 4, but we'll get to that. Psalm 119. We'll be in Psalms for a little, little bit, so if you want to follow along. Verse 48. One page off. Okay. We are to meditate on God's laws. All right. David wrote it this way. My hands also will I lift up to your commandments. And now I've got to turn the page. My fingers that don't work right. Which I love. And what does he say? And I will meditate on your statutes. Okay. That is 100% the opposite of the world's idea of meditation. Because it's not looking inward. It's looking up. It's looking to God. Meditating on God's laws. It relays a requirement. How can we meditate on God's laws if we don't even know what they are? It requires that we get to know what God had to say when he had men pen his word. It is an absolute requirement if we're going to meditate the way God wants us to meditate. Now, I, why is this important to the Christian life? Because you'll see as we progress through this that it has to do with where our thoughts turn on a perpetual basis. Now, what, what, on what are we... pondering or considering mulling over in our mind to meditate on God's work uh, works Psalm 43 43. Oh, sorry 143 thank you 143 and I went way too far I knew that. 143, verse 5. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse the works of your hands. You know, I meditate on what? All your works. Now, why would that be important? To consider not only his law, that which he's told us you must or must not, but what he's done. If we, well, go ahead. Well, I just wonder what our God's works is that you should meditate on. Um, the only one I'm coming up with in my head is creation. Okay, uh, that's a huge thing. I, med meditating on that which he did. Uh, it might be. Oh, good grief. Anything. Uh, well, I know this is one of the things about David when I was reading the book is they were having a lot of problems remembering that God was the 
Egypt you bet. You bet. What does... What has God done to prove himself to me? That's what I need to meditate on. Whatever it might be. It, it could be a huge list of things. I woke up this morning on this side of eternity. <laughs> Therefore, it's God's works because the Bible says that he gives us breath and he gives us life. <laughs> it's not me that did it. I, I'll be honest about it. I didn't even eat that healthy yesterday. <laughs> I did things that, you know, don't lend itself to my being around today necessarily. But God didn't. He kept me alive for an, for yet another day. It could be safety going in and out of the road. Last week, a car went off. Was it last week or the week? The end of la the week prior, a car went off the road down by our lanes and all but the father of the family died. Three people. You know, and do we take it for granted or do we consider the fact that God kept us safe? So I know tomorrow God can keep me safe. I know he can give me life. It, will he choose to? I don't know. But I certainly know he can. And if I'm looking at anything but what God is doing for me, I'm looking at myself and saying, well, maybe I'm the one that did it. And then I become an idolater because I'm worshiping me rather than him. This is one of the things that we, I mean, I, I'll meditate on all your works. Now, does that mean he's got to put his feet in an uncomfortable position and sit with his back straight enough to release the serpent from his pelvic area to affect his brain and put his hands in a, in such a way as to uh, cause enough discomfort to keep me awake while I'm doing it? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. The meditation he's talking about here is what he's got going through his mind when he has opportunity to do so. Considering, looking at, let, let's jump back and to engage in contemplation or reflection. Hey, that's what he's doing. Contemplating and reflecting on what God has done for him. And to focus his thoughts thereon. And to reflect or ponder over. That's meditation. Another one. Meditate on the glory of God's majesty. Psalm 145, verse 5. Says, I will meditate on your glorious splend on the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works. Now, David had huge amounts of difficulties in this life. If ever there was a person who had the right to look at his surroundings and say, why me? It was him. We go through some difficulties, admittedly. But that's not where our thoughts should be. The glorious, how is it put in this verse? The glorious splendor of God's majesty. Wow. You know, one day we're going to see him. Don't know when it'll be. I have no clue. When we do, we will understand more the glorious splendor of His majesty. All we can go by now is that which was penned thousands of years ago 
for us to look at and see, you know, what it is that we have to look forward to. But we know from the description of God himself, by God himself, for example, in Revelation, that it's majestic beyond words. I've often wondered if the streets of gold, for example, were really streets of gold, or if it was just the nicest thing that John could have thought <laughs> to describe it with, you know, beyond streets of gold. If that would be the case, and I don't know whether it is, the description of God himself may be just the best thing that they could think of to describe what he saw. You know, I, I don't know. And, and how much past that could it be? I mean, the Bible tells us, I has not seen, nor has ear heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who trust him. We don't even know. Can't even imagine in, in all reality meditating on God's majesty. He's certainly worthy of that meditation. And again, that was to contemplate. Keep on mind. Uh, don't let it just slip out of our mindset so we could look at our surroundings and think about how great things are here or how bad things are here or how I'm doing good or how I need to improve this or whatever. <clears throat> Considering with honesty not only the glory of his majesty but again his works the glorious splendor of your majesty on, on, and on your works there's a reason for all this and I want to I, I didn't put this into the notes but the next the next verse says what the reason for all this is it says men shall speak of your your awesome acts and I will declare your greatness if we don't meditate on Christ we're not going to care to tell others I mean, it's just how it seems to be because we get distracted and I've done it I'm sure you've done it as well you know life goes on it's there's there's things to do there's there's toughness to life yet we're called by God himself to meditate on him I don't want to spend Psalm 77 verse 12 talks about his work as well I will also meditate on your work and talk of your deeds. This one again shows the result of meditation is finally opening your mouth to tell others. How often have we sat right here in the confines of this room and had opportunity to bring up something that God has done for us to praise him for what he does or to thank him for what he does and instead we just ask for more by way of a request now, we may know that he does this or does that for us but we don't we don't direct it properly Philippians chapter 4. There's a couple of places in, in the New Testament that I want to hit because this isn't just an Old Testament thing that David wrote about. Verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, 
whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue or if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Hmm. That kind of lends itself to meditating on our surroundings as long as we see it through godly eyes. Not looking in. If we look in, what did, what did Jesus say we would find? All sorts of bad things that defile a man. But this, if anything, is a good report. Not able to find fault with. Think on these things. Meditate on these things. Consider them in the night. Consider them in the day. Upon your bed. In the morning. In the evening. David wrote about it, referred to it as in the night watches. I could see him waking up in the middle of the night and having the quietness all around him. And having perfect opportunity to meditate on God. Well, in this one, whatever's true, wow, that's a whole lot different than what comes from within me. Whatever things are noble, again, different than what comes from within me or you. Whatever things are pure, huh, nothing in me that's pure except the Spirit of God. Whatever things are lovely, I can't fit that category. You see the difference between the world's idea of meditation being promoted, even in our little community here through Buddhism, that uh, go against what God has to say? What a huge difference. I... I I'll be honest about it. I've taught this. As a matter of fact, I went over Philippians 4, 8 not that long ago, right here in this room. And it never really stood out to me until I went through a rather intense look at what it means to meditate. And I had never looked it up in the dictionary before. I've heard people say we need to meditate. and I know... I don't know about anybody else in this room, but I know I can't get my feet behind my head or nothing. <laughs> I can't even get my head to fit around right like they want you to. I can't do those things. So what in the world is it talking about? That which is pure, honest, lovely, of good report. The best that God can give. Meditate on these things. Mull them over. Don't let them be far from your mind. Rather, hold them close. First Timothy 4, 13 through 15. Another one that was quite, quite in interesting to me. Paul's writing to Timothy and he says, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with laying on of hands, of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Meditate on them. On what? Reading. Exhortation and doctrine. Again, requires that we get to know the Word of God so that we can do this. Meditating on improper doctrine is not meditating on what's true, honest, of good report, pure, all that that's mentioned in Philippians 4.8. And I memorized that verse a long time ago and I still can't get it straight. 
I was able to say it for VBS, and that was good enough. I got my points, and that was that was it. Uh, but you, you go back and look at it for yourself. I mean, we if we aren't if we're meditating on improper doctrine or reading other than the Word of God, then we're missing the boat. I'm all for educating oneself. Absolutely. I have a number of interests that I pursue wholeheartedly because I really want to learn all I can learn about the given subjects, whatever they might happen to be. But it's going to do me no good to meditate on them. It, it just doesn't. And again, going back to the definition of meditation, we need to do it what what God says and meditate properly. Okay, now we've got 20 minutes left and we're at the conclusion. But this is where it gets interesting. There's a comparison here. Man's meditation says look inward. God's meditation says look up. Which do we do on a regular basis? Bearing in mind that which God says is pure, honest, lovely, all the things in Philippians 4.8. That which is from me, from my, from inside of me, defiles me. Because though I am a person in whom the Spirit of God dwells, I still have a bent towards sin. We looked at that a number of weeks back. It doesn't change anything except we have a way out now. If you look at 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it tells us that there's a way out. Because of that way out, I don't have to sin. But I still want to gratify self. And the only way I can do that is by looking inward. And what I find in there is nothing good whatsoever I look to, to God and what do I find for one thing the author and finisher of my faith why look at me and find defilement when I can look at the one who entices Righteousness. That's that's a strong comparison. Man's meditation says I need to unleash my spirit. And I should have got quotes that I got all these from, direct quotes from people who were teaching meditation. Um, I didn't do it. I just went through, a, a, spent hours basically going through this. Um, seeing what they had to say. But I need to unleash my spirit. God's meditation says, let God's spirit move. Let him do what he's going to do in me. Mine, if I, if I go by what man tells me to do, it by way of meditation, for one thing, I'll never have the posture it takes to release that serpent. But if I could, all I could do was bring myself to a potentially hazardous state. 
Well, I, I better clarify that. What, what do I mean by a potentially hazardous state? I find it very significant that they say you need to release that serpent to go up and control your mind when the Bible is very clear about the serpent's role. I believe with all my heart that they're unleashing evil spirits and or Satan himself to control their mind. Because of that, evil things flow. And Robert, you hit it right on the head. They've been doing this for I don't know how many years, to be honest about it, when it actually started. Thousands, we'll put it that way. And yet, how's that working out for you? It's not. Because it can't. Because that which you're calling up is evil. And evil does not produce good. Evil produces evil. And if I let my inner spirit go and do what it will in my life, it'll be nothing more than self-gratification until the day I die. And self-gratification is never the way to go. Gratifying the spirit of God is always the way to go. It cannot be any different than that. God can't work in and through me when self is most important to me. I must meditate on his word, on his works, on his desire for my life to be pure and all that, to meditate on doctrine and not just do it in a five minute period at church or an hour period at church, but to do it day and night. Consider the works that God does and know that he's God. The Bible tells us to be still. This is what God said. Be still and know that I am God. That be still very accurately could be translated meditate <laughs> very accurately it's the same concept it's the same ideal everything about it's the same get to know god you look like you had a thought robert did i did i misread something no i always have thought <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to leave somebody out if they if they have a an interjection. That's fine. Meditation by man's way says I need to focus on me. I sit. I go to some peaceful place, and I sit in such a way, and then. Look at the inner me and see the beauty. Let me tell you this. I'm not going to find it. But if as it in, implicates in Psalms time after time, I mean, you look at this, the Psalms alone, there's, oh, good grief, 400 times maybe? I didn't stop and count them all, but just a rough estimate. Probably 400 times that meditation is brought up. And none of them are meditating on oneself, but rather on God. And if I focus on Him, then self gets set aside so that God can work in me. Our desire should be that not only do we first acknowledge that we have a propensity to sin, but to put off sin, such as we looked at a couple of weeks back. 
and then compare sin with righteousness as we did previously as well. And then let our mind contemplate the greatness of Almighty God and the progression steps up next week I want to look at the kind of love God wants us to have when he says love your neighbor as yourself as a commandment if God is not the center of our meditation we will not have that kind of love it cannot be that we would Man's meditation says sit straight. Keep that back just right so that the serpent can get out of your pelvic area and up to your brain. God says, Neil. <laughs> I don't care how you slice it. You may not even believe in God, but guess what? One day you're going to kneel before him. It, it's going to happen. It cannot be avoided. The whole implication here in my mind is that self should sit tall in the man's meditation slot and be proud and if you're going to look to yourself if you're going to unleash your spirit if you're going to focus on yourself then you might as well be proud as well but God says look up let the spirit of God move focus on God and kneel what does it mean to kneel? In a real practical sense, to submit. To submit. That's all we got to do. And the Bible tells us that He'll keep us in perfect peace if our mind is stayed on Him, if we trust in Him. You look inward and you find rot. You look upward and you find peace. That is exactly the opposite of what the world says. The world, I mean, secular meditation was, when I was looking at this, it was excessively clear that the only place you're going to find peace is from within. And you can not find peace outside of yourself. That is 100% the opposite. Absolutely the opposite of what God said. So it lends to the question, where does it come from? If it's the opposite of what God said, I think we're pretty clear as to where it comes from. I know that's horrible English and I don't care. <laughs> it comes from Satan himself always changing the word of God to say something else. God talked about meditation for Ages before David. That wasn't a new concept with David. He expressed it in ways that I think the average person can relate to. Okay. But Satan's saying, look at self. What it is, is it's really... Man's meditation is really 
the same problem that we saw in five of the churches in Revelation. There's no way around the idea that it is self-gratification. Make me feel good about myself and I'm at peace. And it, you, you don't find it. You don't find it. Jesus said that the, the way to have peace is through him. Not through meditating and trying to release the serpent from your pelvic area to, to affect your mind and to control your mind. It's just not how it works. But if I'm not submissive, unwilling to kneel, so to speak, then I, I'm not, I'm not doing any good to meditate on anything. And I might as well look inward. I don't know, nor do I particularly care whether anybody in this room is struggling with proper meditation. My point this morning isn't to point out to people their sin or anything like that, but rather to encourage to proper meditation brought on by a love for God that speaks volumes. One, one thing that I, one picture that I had that I don't think I brought on to this, it said, it, it had a quote, and it was one that really pretty much hit the mark. The quote, well, did I even save that? Let me, I know this is kind of uncouth, but I'm going to look. There it is, right there. Let's see if we can get that to come up. Prayer is when you talk to God. I agree with that. Meditation is when God talks to you. I'm guessing I probably looked through 1,500 pictures over the course of this last week. And that is the only one that was on there in regard. I typed in... Uh, meditation and looked at images and that was the only one that had the proper idea of what meditation was out of all of them that I looked at. Why? Because the world says look inside ourselves. Because God says look to me. <laughs> and they will do anything they can to prevent people from looking to God. This is being taught in our schools to children. It's being propagated daily. I want to go back up here to this one because that speaks volumes to me. No, not that. Come on. If every eight-year-old in the world is taught med meditation, we will eliminate violence from the world within one generation. And it's not happening, but they're sure trying to indoctrinate even the youngest of children. It doesn't say, you know, any outcome because I think they would hide from their outcome. But, but if no, any child would uh, meditate on the Lord and on the Bible and His Word, um, it would. It would now, see that—that's. I was just going to say that. I told you before that I agree with that statement, but not in the sense that they're talking about. Not teaching inward self and pride of oneself. 
and all the things that go along with it. But meditating on God's Word, on God's laws, on God and His mighty works, on that which is pure, honest, lovely, of good report, uh, you know, everything good, on proper doctrine and the truth, and utilizing that truth, then yes, there would be a change in the world because peace comes through Christ alone. You're absolutely right, Mother, and it makes me wonder if maybe the point got across this morning. I agree. Sure, absolutely. Exactly. Believe it or not, yeah, he believed himself to be a Christ. I mean, I, I could show you, if, if I brought up the Internet, I could get right to it and show you where I get my information One, one thing that they really brought out in my investigation of this is that time doesn't really matter how long you do this. You know, we'll say every day or I don't know how often they, they get together and do their meditation or go off by themselves and do their meditation. They said time isn't really that relevant to it, but the longer the better. Well, that doesn't really add up either. I mean, there's inconsistencies all through it, and yet look at the number of people flocking to it in our community. They want it's peace. They don't. Or if they do, they scoff. They're looking They're looking for peace from inside. I'm good enough. I'm the right kind of person. Uh, you know, the list is long. Hey, Robert, you're hitting it right on the head, my friend. You know, it's, it's just an indoctrination against Almighty God Himself. Okay, okay. That's a better way of putting it. Yeah, you're right. For a minute, I, I, that's a whole other ball game, Robert. <laughs> Definition of meditation. Let's think on this for just a second as we close. To engage in contemplation or reflection. Does that have a little different meaning now that we've gone over this and seen uh, just a scratch of the surface of what God's Word had to say, or to focus one's thoughts on, or to reflect or ponder over? The choice is yours. It, nobody can make you do it but you.
Sure. All spent. You have to be a blank slate. What I've discovered is that the Spirit. Exactly. And, you know, that goes back to the idea of them saying that you need to release that serpent to control your mind. Well, it's Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, it would be fun to sit down with you and, and go over some of this just individually sometime because you've got experience with it. I don't. I'm only going by what I get from their information. So, you know, it makes it, it, makes it more interesting to me to converse with somebody knowing more about it to that regard, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a distraction from God. That's that's all it is. We we've got to close. I'm getting the eyeball, and and things are getting a little rough. Uh, uh, we've got to get off of this. <laughs> uh, it is over time. I admit that. I. To me, this is just a really sensitive and, and important subject. But anyway, let's close with prayer. Lord, thank you that we can look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. And when we do, you alone will keep us at perfect peace as long as we're, we keep our minds stayed on you. Help us to trust you to that regard. Help us to look at your works, your, your laws, your, your doctrines, your, the things that you want us to know. And then that which is good, honest, lovely, pure, of good report, everything like that. Help us to meditate on those things and not gratify self because self will get us nowhere. Thank you for what you're going to do in our lives. In your name, amen.